just a uh, few paragraphs and we'll talk about it and then continue. It is said in Bhagavad Gita that simply by surrendering oneself unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality, Krishna, one can surmount the stringent laws of material nature. At this point, a question arises. How is it that educated philosophers, scientists, businessmen, administrators, and all the leaders of ordinary men do not surrender to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna, the all-powerful personality of Godhead? Mukti or liberation from the laws of material nature is sought by the leaders of mankind in different ways and with great plans and perseverance for a great many years and births. But if that liberation is possible by simply surrendering unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then why don't these intelligent and hard-working leaders adopt this simplest method? the simple method. The Gita answers this question very frankly. Those really learned leaders of society like Brahma, Shiva, Kapila, the Kumaras, Manu, Vyasa, Devala, Asita, Janaka, Prahlada, Bali, and later on Madhvacharya, Ramanajacharya, Sri Chaitanya, and many others who are faithful philosophers, politicians, educators, scientists, etc., surrender to the lotus feet of the Supreme Person, the all powerful authority. Those who are not actually philosophers, scientists, educators, administrators, etc., but who pose themselves as such for material gain, do not accept the plan or path of the Supreme Lord. They have no idea of God. They simply manufacture their own worldly plans and consequently complicate the problems of material existence in their vain attempts to solve them. Because material energy, nature, is so powerful it can resist the unauthorized plans of the atheists and baffle the knowledge of planning commissions. <coughs> the atheistic plan makers are described herein by the word duskritinaha or miscreants. Kriti means one who has performed a meritorious work. The atheistic plan maker is sometimes very intelligent and meritorious also because any gigantic plan, good or bad, must take intelligence to execute it. But because the atheist brain is improperly utilized in opposing the plan of the Supreme Lord, the atheistic plan maker is called Dushkriti which indicates that his intelligence and efforts are misdirected. We'll stop here and we'll continue after this discussion. Om Agnana Timirandasya Gnana Anjana Shalakaya Chekshurun Militam Enam Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Te Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine <coughs> Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Pasya Tadeshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gauravakranda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Those miscreants who are grossly foolish, who are lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion, and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. 
So in the purport, Srila Prabhupada is saying, in the, it is said in Bhagavad Gita that simply by surrendering oneself unto the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality, Krishna, one can surmount the stringent laws of material nature. At this point, a question arises. How is it that people don't surrender? Right? The, very, the answer is so simple. Why are not people doing it? Once, uh, in San Francisco, in our uh, Haight Ashbury temple, one of the first few temples that were started, Srila Prabhupada was giving a class. And then, you know, he was explaining how if you don't serve God, you have to serve dog. And if you're not careful, you'll actually become a dog in your next life. Right? Then suddenly one of the hippies who was attending the lecture, he got up and he said, Hey Swamiji, you're saying that if you don't serve God, you'll become a dog. What is wrong with becoming a dog? I'm more than happy to become a dog. Prabhupada lifted his head up, looked at him and said, you have my blessings. <laughs> that person just, just couldn't say anything, he just sat down. So we see in this modern world, instead of just giving up everything and very nicely, beautifully surrendering to God, and Krishna is telling, Yoga Kshemu Maham Yaham, I will take care of you. Right? But no. People are, you know, uh, they want to serve dog. We see nowadays it has become a big fashion. You know, in our, uh, we have never heard about this before in India and all that. Here, other day, I was talking to somebody and he said, Sorry, I'm a little late to the meeting. I was. Um, I had to go to the dentist appointment. I said, oh, is everything okay? You know, I just asked like that. Oh, no, no, it is not for me. It is for my dog. You know? There was uh, some wisdom teeth that had to get removed from the dog. <laughs> so nowadays, you know, people are spending so much of time and energy serving dogs and, you know, um, doing all kinds of things. See, there's nothing wrong with that. Right? But if that is coming at the cost of human life, coming at the cost of you know, having time to pursue spiritual education, spiritual understanding, it is detrimental. The Shastras say that this human body is a very special body. That's why the Vedanta Sutras, they begin with Atatho Brahma Jignasa. Right? These Vedanta Sutras are formulas, very simple formulas. Atatho Brahma Jignasa, that's all, three words. Atatho means now, Brahma means spiritual, Jignasa. Has in, have inquisitiveness. What is this Atato stands for? What is that now? Anybody can say what is this now referring to? Huh? Yeah. 
hence forth ah huh? mm. and you said something else balram now that we have a human body yeah hence forth it, that's a literal meaning but the actual meaning that the shastra said and now what is that now now that you have a human body you should indulge in brahma jignasa because if the goal in life is oh, if the goal in life is sense gratification enjoyment of the senses this material body this human body is not the most suited there are other bodies that are better suited for sense gratification if you know people want to sleep for many many hours on the weekends they want to sleep till noon i slept till 3 o'clock in the afternoon if you really want to sleep a very very long time which body is more suited the bear's body right they hibernate for 6 months <laughs> you can sleep a very long time and ah after winter is over you can get up for spring <laughs> right so there are other bodies that are better suited for material sense gratification what is not possible is brahma jignasa understanding about brahman so the the, uh, the propar is, is saying why is it that all these big big educated philosophers scientists businessmen administrators all the leaders of ordinary men do not surrender to the supreme lord propar is saying the gita answers this question very frankly if they were really learned then they would surrender right the example is given the really learned leaders of society like brahma shiva kapila the kumaras manu vyasa devala asita janaka pralada bali now these are all the mahajanas and later on madhvacharya ramanacharya chaitanya sri chaitanya and many others these surrender under the lotus feet of the supreme lord in this material world we are all making lot of attempts at conquering this world but all our attempts at doing so end up in very abysmal failures right it results in so much of pain and suffering for the living entity for everybody concerned so that's why the shastra say that one has to surrender one has to follow here see because material nature is so powerful it can resist the unauthorized plans of the atheists and baffle the knowledge of the planning commissions so what are we supposed to do we are supposed to transcend this and learn to surrender to the lord so there is a further description who are these different kinds of dushkrutinaha kruti means activities dush means in our species are bad activities right the word dushkrutina is miscreants who are doing wrong things kruti means who has perform meritorious work duskriti means the opposite so let us see here uh, the further description i'll read the rest of the purport and then there is a detailed description of the four kinds we'll just read one of them first in the gita it is clearly mentioned that material energy works fully under the direction of the supreme lord it has no independent authority it works as the shadow moves in accordance with the movement of the object but still material energy is very powerful and the atheist due to his godless temperament cannot know how it works nor can he know the plan of the supreme lord 
under illusion and the modes of passion and ignorance all his plans are baffled as in the case of hiranyakashipu and ravana whose plans were smashed to dust although they were both materially learned as scientists philosophers administrators and educators these dushkritanas or miscreants are of four different patterns as outlined below so let's see first one first one is the mooda the moodas are those who are grossly foolish like hard working beasts of burden they want to enjoy the fruits of their labor by themselves and so do not want to part with them for the supreme the typical example of the beast of burden is the ass this humble beast is made to work very hard by his master the ass does not really know for whom he works so hard day and night he remains satisfied by filling his stomach with a bundle of grass sleeping for a while under fear of being beaten by his master and satisfying his sex appetite at the risk of being repeatedly kicked by the opposite party the ass sings poetry and philosophy sometimes but this braying sound only disturbs others this is the position of the foolish fruity worker who does not know for whom he should work he does not know that karma action is meant for yagna sacrifice most often those who work very hard day and night to clear the burden of self created duties say that they have no time to hear of the immortality of the living being to such moodas material gains which are destructible are lives all in all despite the fact that the moodas enjoy only a very small fraction of the fruit of labor sometimes they spend sleepless days and nights for fruitive gain and although they may have ulcers or indigestion they are satisfied with practically no food they are simply absorbed in working hard day and night for the benefit of illusory masters ignorant of the real master the foolish workers waste their valuable time serving mammon unfortunately they never surrender unto the supreme master of all masters nor do they take time to hear of him from the proper sources the swine who eats the night soil do not care to accept sweet meats made of sugar and ghee similarly the foolish worker will untiringly continue to hear of the sense enjoyable tidings of the flickering one day in world but will have very little time to hear about the eternal living force that moves the material world so we see here shila propat is describing the moodas or asses in bhagavatam this whole working like an ass you know is called pavarga pa pa ba ba ma what is pa pa stand for huh pa pa ba ba hmm parichrama i thought hard work because of parichrama then pha fena no have you seen when the horses and donkeys are working very hard <laughs> they are like breathing hard and foam is coming out of their nose hard work pha pha 
भा भावज पा एंड देन भाया भा इज भाया एंड मा इज मृत्यु एंड द राइट सो दे आर वर्किंग सो हार्ड फोम इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ देयर माउथ राइट दिस रिमाइंड्स मी देयर इज एक्चुअली अ टर्म in uh, both japanese culture and korean culture i forget that word there is a word for people who die at work it seems is not uncommon at all there <laughs> their their cultures especially the koreans i was once um, working with a team and this person had gone and done a project in korea recently and he was coming and telling us you see this was in mckinsey where the first of all they work like donkeys and he was coming and telling you know what happened i was in this project in korea you know usually by evening 7 o'clock 8 o'clock they are getting ready to wind up what is it called karoshi yeah so um so then you know 8 o'clock they'll say okay let's go and let's go to our off, uh, hotel rooms and then whatever remaining work is there we'll do over there okay so that's a normal this thing so by 7 8 they'll wrap up and go not that you know at the end of the day usually it's 5 o'clock and then 8 o'clock also not end of the day we'll go to hotel and continue working they said they say, okay let's wind up and go so he said that to his team and everybody is looking at him no no we'll work for some more time said no you work but go home na why you want to work over here whatever little work is there go do at home sleep nicely let's come tomorrow and uh, he said no 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 we'll some more time we'll work some more time we'll work so they like what is going on maybe there's some urgent work okay I'll, i'll stay with them it won't look nice if i don't stay after some time he said hey baba it's too late let's go and he sent them away and he went back to his hotel then he got a call one of the associates mother was calling um, i know something must have happened today you sent him home you know you must have done some mistake but you know please you know why you sent him home like this he is working so hard he is trying to make a living you know if you send him off like this what uh, goal <laughs> where should he go He said, "No, no, I was not upset with him. I just sent him home so that he can go and sleep. Eight o'clock in the night. When will he stop working?" It's a regular culture. It seems they'll work till eight. Then they'll go for dinner at eight o'clock. All of them. Then they'll go drink a little bit, come back and work till twelve o'clock in the office. And people, actually, in the middle of meetings, they are sitting and doing a meeting. They'll get a heart attack and they'll die. when they study you know the body is stressed over stress from work and this is not like you know one person died there once in a while some youtube they'll show it seems very common that's why they have a word for it karoshi eh? <laughs> you know in sanskrit karoshi means doing you know like donkey is doing <laughs> yes karoshi you should have karoshi for krishna you do karoshi for maya <laughs> this karoshi only will happen for you <laughs> you know they take pride this mother is telling why are you sending him home at 9 o'clock what mistake did he do what is this you know propad used to say human life means you work nicely 6 hours 7 hours 8 hours at the most then you should be free you should have lot of time on your hands to sit and think what is the goal in life spend time with the family teach them about krishna consciousness right and do some you know evening aarti at home right have nice prasadam 
and sleep nicely get good sleep rest this is the vedic way of living but the material world you know propad used to say they've increased the fever of material existence right so the ass is a perfect example of this propad is telling very very you know this if you understand the very deep meaning in each one of these things propad is calling out he is saying three things about the ass he is telling the ass is working very hard he does not know who is working for he does not enjoy even a fraction of the fruit of his labor right this ass is carrying huge loads not even one of that clothes is the ass's clothes <laughs> right and what is he getting for doing this hard work little morsels of grass which is freely available everywhere right pralad maharaj in the seventh canto he says there is a very famous verse right where he is saying ayatnatah this gratification of the senses the senses coming in touch with the sense objects the sukham sukham aindrikam aindrikam sukham the sukham that comes from the indriyas this is will automatically come to you ayatna hataha means without yatna without endeavor just like suffering comes to you do you work hard for suffering anybody has broken their hand or legs here when did it happen 2017 ha huh? appendicitis he had ha huh? okay so so uh, madhav did on that day you broke your hand did you get up in the morning and say today i'm going to work very hard and i'm going to break my hand right you didn't even know you're going to break your hand right and just like that the time came your hand broke it was painful right and then you had to get a cast and everything so that is ayatnatah ayatna yatna means endeavor you did not endeavor for that breaking hand it came the shastras are saying if you have a human body just like you are not endeavoring for suffering happiness will also come exactly the same way without any endeavor so that's why it is said that we have to then what should we do what should our endeavor be right what should the, our action be right it should not be like the ass our endeavor should be for spiritual advancement that is why this athatho brahma jignasa so the ass what else it is doing it is working very hard for a bundle of grass sleeping for a little while under fear of being beaten by the master it is said that on an average in the last you know and uh, one or two almost one or two decades the average amount of sleep that a person has has reduced almost by an hour to an hour and a half it seems everybody our four our two generations behind they were all sleeping very nicely <laughs> right and they have done lot of research on this sleeplessness is one of the sure fire ways of getting all kinds of diseases and it shortens life span very significantly 
she just like you know they say the hardest working muscle in our body heart also is beating but more than that the there's not exactly a muscle but the brain if you compare it to a muscle it's the most hard working part of your whole body and unlike you know the typical system of how you know toxins are removed the brain has a very unique way of detoxifying itself after a hard days work when you go into deep sleep you know they call it rem sleep right rapid eye movement they have seen they have made you know images you can see them on uh, youtube you know th- there are fluid suddenly from all over the brain that goes to central portion and gets drained out so there's a cleansing of the brain that is going on also during rem sleep they say that all the different things that you are working on they all get connected and stored in long term memory so sleeping sufficient amount of time is a very very important aspect of proper functioning they have done tests to say that a sleep deprived person is behaves exactly like somebody who is driving under the influence of alcohol so much of detrimental thing so when it is so serious so this thing as a society you know we have created just like this ass ass is sleeping a little all fear you know of being beaten by the master and the third example that is given is that and is he is satisfying his sex appetite at the risk of being repeatedly kicked by the opposite party shamelessly the she the donkey is going behind the she donkey and the she donkey is kicking with the back legs still he is going up so the shastras are summing up the essence of you know of our modern civilization work hard like donkeys and um, you know not even like this is the position of the foolish fruity worker who does not know for whom he should work and he does not know that karma action is meant for yagna sacrifice so this mudha this foolish grossly foolish worker uh, they are working day and night and uh, despite all their work you know they have proper is also explaining they spend sleepless days and nights for fruit of gain and although they may have ulcers or indigestion they are satisfied with practically no food they simply absorbed in working hard day and night for the benefit of illusory masters another very interesting thing proper says sometimes these um, these donkeys you know they are singing they are braying where is this very nicely he says huh the ass sings poetry and philosophy sometimes <laughs> but this braying sound only disturbs others as is thinking oh i am so skilled i am so wonderful and is braying ah ba ba you know singing and saying philosophy this is exactly like the philosophy of the materialists all kinds of philosophies people come up with right freud has his own philosophy right all these modern philosophers all kinds of crazy ideas they have what is the goal of life what you should do and all that and everything is aimed around forgetting krishna and somehow trying to eke out enjoyment right this um, you know in now in the vedic also the karma mimamsa philosophy they say right what is that grutam pipitva yavad jivam sukham jivet grutam pitva ha runam kutva so 
So basically, they are saying, you know, even make do not you know have debt, create debt, and uh, eat ghee. Why? Because you know, once you die, basmi bhutasya. Once you die, you know, there is nothing, nothing to do. We are all gone. So you take debt and go. It's not your problem. The person who gave that is their problem. <laughs> right so this very foolish society is working so hard so this thing in fact i recently came across this and i was very shocked this is, um, there is one um, neuroscientist and an ophthalmologist an optical uh, neuroscientist actually not ophthalmologist his name is andrew huberman in stanford university he has done lot of studies on uh, these things it seems when you are very intensely working like a donkey your vision your eyes itself right they are focused in such a way that you are seeing like suppose you know you are looking at the trees you know outside this beautiful trees are there you are focused on one tree one tree trunk you are seeing and that's it it is good to have that kind of focused vision for short times short periods of time when you have to like you know act on something very quickly you have to escape from something or do something very you know short this thing what happens when you focus on one tree what happens eyes get tired yes what else happens huh okay what we see is stored but think about it you are focused on only one thing you lose sight of other things the large you lose sight of the bigger picture is the only one tree is there outside you go see is there only one tree outside there is such a vast area so many things are there and those things are important you lose track of the real purpose of life you become so laser focused in this foolish endeavor that you don't understand why am i endeavoring what is the goal of life what is the purpose of life what am i trying to get out of this life all that is lost so that is why this modern civilization the way we have created this ass mentality is soul killing that's why proper used to use the word soul killing civilization it is killing the soul see we are also forced to work in this world many of us have jobs outside grahasthas right for taking care of the family we are working outside we have to be very careful and very deliberately over time we should learn to work satvikali even at work if we do not do that no it is very like we will lose sight of what is the real purpose of life and we are forcing this body you know this uh, as work pa pa bha ma what is happening in the end ma only is happening mrutyu is happening <laughs> right so we have to be we have to work smarter not harder and one should you know that's why uh, in the one example is given if we have to go and our work is to go cut wood in the forest right whole day you are supposed to go cut wood for 8 hours and bring firewood there are two ways of doing this one way of doing it is oh, go first thing in the morning start chopping tap 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 keep hitting non stop there is another way of doing this what is the other way anybody else sharpen the axe sharpen the axe before you start your work take your axe spend half an hour sharpening it nicely 
when the axe is sharp then when you go cut the wood it'll chop very easily and what would have taken you so much longer because of a dull axe you can do quickly so this is how we as spiritualists you know we should practice our endeavor in this world so what is our sharpening of the axe or sadhana in the morning we should spend quality time chanting hare krishna hearing shrimad bhagavatam and putting ourselves in a sattvic frame of mind and outside world the purpose of this outside world is to create lots of tension lot of this thing lot of craziness but we should develop that habit of understand what is the critical thing in this so many things will be there what is the so what what is the most thing and then concentrate your work on that critical thing other things will come and go right so propad is telling us that we should not become mudas or like asses and not lose you know the the main goal of life you know this is a very long purport we'll just read the second one narada maha oh this is also very long we'll see if we can finish it in the 7 minutes that we have <laughs> another class of dushkruti or miscreants is called the naradama or the lowest of mankind nara means human being and adama means the lowest of the 8400000 different species of living beings there are 400000 human species out of these there are numerous lower forms of human life that are mostly uncivilized the civilized human beings are those who have regulative principles of social political and religious life those who are socially and politically developed but have no religious principles must be considered naradamas nor is religion without god religion because the purpose of following religious principles is to know the supreme truth and man's relation with him in the gita the personality of godhead clearly states that there is no authority above him and that he is the supreme truth the civilized form of human life is meant for man's reviving the lost consciousness of his eternal relation with the supreme truth the personality of godhead shri krishna who is all powerful whoever loses this chance is classified as a naradama we get information from revealed scriptures that when the baby is in the mother's womb an extremely uncomfortable situation he prays to god for deliverance and promises to worship him alone as soon as he gets out to pray to god when he is in difficulty is a natural instinct in every living being because he is eternally related with god but after his deliverance the child forgets the difficulties of birth and forgets his deliverer also being influenced by maya the illusory energy it is the duty of the guardians of children to revive the divine consciousness dormant in them the 10 processes of reformatory ceremonies as enjoined in the manusmriti which is the guide to religious principles are meant for reviving god consciousness in the system of varnashrama therefore sorry however no process is strictly followed now in any part of the world and therefore 99.9% of the population is naradama when the whole population becomes naradama naturally all their so called education is made null and void 
by the all-powerful energy of physical nature. According to the standard of the Gita, a learned man is he who sees on equal terms the learned Brahmana, the dog, the cow, the elephant and the dog eater. That is the vision of a true devotee. Sri Nityananda Prabhu, who is the incarnation of Godhead as Divine Master, delivered the typical Naradamas, the brothers Jagai and Madai, and showed how the mercy of a real devotee is bestowed upon the lowest of mankind. So the Naradama who is condemned by the personality of Godhead can again revive his spiritual consciousness only by the mercy of a devotee. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in propagating the Bhagavata Dharma or activities of the devotees, has recommended that people submissively hear the message of the Personality of Godhead. The essence of this message is Bhagavad Gita. The lowest among human beings can be delivered by this submissive hearing process only. But unfortunately, they even refuse to give an oral reception to these messages and what to speak of surrendering to the will of the Supreme Lord. Naradamas or lowest of mankind willfully neglect the prime duty of the human being. So we see here, Prabhupada is talking about the next category, Naradamas. He's saying, in out of the 400,000 species of human beings, Naradama is the lowest of those species. And how is he defining them? Any society that does not have a civilized regulative principles of social, political and religious life. We see in this modern world nowadays, there is so much talk about you know, oh, diversity, inclusion, wokeness, right to this, right to that, right, 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 right. Everybody is talking about rights. But nobody is talking about what? Duty. For all of us to have rights, somebody has to perform duty. <laughs> you know, there was one, uh, one comedian was telling a nice joke. He was saying, after many, many, many years, for the first time, I had to pay taxes. And as soon as he saw his tax bill, he said, overnight I became a Republican. <laughs> because these Democrats, you know, they keep saying, no taxation, no this thing. And he's telling, I'm paying all these taxes. Everybody should pay taxes. Why only I should pay for all of you? <laughs> if everybody does not do their duty, how can we enjoy our rights? That is the essential principle of Vedic life. Life is meant for enjoyment. Nobody is telling, don't enjoy. But pay the price, buy it legitimately and you enjoy. If you want something, work hard, go to the mall, purchase it, and then you enjoy. If you go inside, like you know, they're doing, in, I think California, they're doing, I don't know what is happening over here. They just, people are rushing into stores, grabbing everything and just running away. No, it's very well planned. Lots of them go at one time. Then what will everybody do? Like uh, hundred people come and just take everything. Whom will they go after? It's all over in a few seconds. And they're thinking they're doing wonderful things. This is the modern society. It has become a society of everybody wants rights, rights, rights. Nobody wants to do duties. So Prabhupada is telling, if you don't want a Nara, what is a Naradama society? Society that does not have a civilized means of social, political, and religious life. No. So, 
we should understand the precarious nature of the world we are in and its precarious conditions by studying you know who are the ones who don't come and why they don't surrender to god we should take inspiration from that to not do that and actually work towards surrendering to god okay so this is a very long uh, purport here we'll stop here anybody has any quick questions or comments those in the zoom session has anybody has any questions Yes, Matthew. a very interesting question in fact we have created a society like that here also more so in the bay area if both parents don't work it is impossible to live nowadays especially with kids going to cos colleges and all that see we are here we have to do that but i think the more intelligent thing is how do you work how do you balance thankfully you know most of us have knowledge work that's why the principle of sharpening the axe is very important and we as spiritualists one advantage that we have which the karmis do not have we should take advantage of that what is that our ability to focus right when we are chanting we should hear the chanting when we are you know working like usually the biggest problem nowadays is that distractions so many distractions this one that one this one you know and then you just open your phone for 5 minutes and something else you will <laughs> before you know you are you know you are flipping your finger for half an hour so very disciplined life we should all live and you know they say we should create focus times you know 60 to 90 minutes they say you need to focus on something to produce anything meaningful turn off everything else no distractions no this thing it's just focus and then you go look at everything for half an hour whatever is needed so if we are follow sattvic habits sleep early because the sleep that you get before 12 o'clock is very restful very good for the brain you sleep early sleep nicely you'll get up early you can finish your chanting sadhana and then you can start you know working make sure you make time for the family as well you know we are working 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 for whom you are working also we for children only but then you don't have time for your children right it's a very very fine balance we have to tread and a lot of it is in trying to work in a very sattvic way another important principle that i keep uh, telling in our temple also to do to devotees is this concept of you know having a sustainable lifestyle you can have emergency suddenly something will come up you know you have to do you have to give up leave everything and do but if that emergency happens let's say once in 15 days that's the hallmark then it is a true emergency you know few times in a year it'll happen you can deal with it if it happens more than that then something is broken some process is broken you have to either dial down you have to work on fixing the process you have to do something else but we should be wash be very careful especially in this material world and this thing we should not become papa baba ma pavarga 
they are supposed to become apavarga and have full faith when you do that with proper consciousness with spiritual life being the goal then dadami buddhi yogam tam yena ma upayantite krishna will give us the buddhi yoga yena ma upayantite from following which we can go back to him okay you know it's pretty late we'll stop here गणतराज श्रीमद भगवदगीता की जय श्री प्रभु